In today's video, we're going to cover a very inexpensive but powerful 5-port switch from Unify. It's a fully managed switch that runs around $30 and integrates nicely into your network. Stick around for the rest of this video if you want to find out more about this low-cost switch and how I implemented a bunch of them into my network. Let's take a quick look and see what you get in the box. As you might expect, it doesn't really come with much except for a USB-C power supply and the switch itself. Taking a closer look at the switch itself, you can see that there are five ports in the front, with the first port being a PoE Plus input port, which allows you to actually power the device if you're actually plugged into a PoE switch, as well as provide an uplink to whatever switch you're actually attaching it to. So if you're running it into a PoE Plus switch or adapter, you can actually power this switch without the use of the USB adapter. If you're running this as a standard switch, you can use the included USB power adapter to get power to the device. Alongside the input port, you get four additional gigabit ports that are fully managed. We'll get into this a little later in the video when you see how I use mine, but as these are very small and inexpensive, making them ideal for aggregating devices in each room, such as your Xboxes, media streamers, Apple TVs, and your PCs, for about 30 bucks a room. So let's go ahead and connect this thing and get it adopted into the system and take a look at uh, some of the features, and then I'll share with you how I'm using several of these for different purposes and why I chose this particular configuration and hookup. So when I log into my Unify controller, the device was auto-detected and I'm prompted to add the device. I'll go ahead and click on add, and now it shows up under my devices and is now being adopted. When that process is finished, you have the option to click the firmware update and update to the latest firmware. These devices typically update themselves uh, because I have it set to auto update, but on the first adoption or the first install, you have to actually click update so that it will update to the latest configuration. Now that that's finished and fully implemented into my network, let's take a quick look at some of the features. The overview screen tells you that what devices are connected, the IP address, back address, the software version, as well as what device it's uplinked to. Clicking on the ports, we can see that which ports are currently active and the speed they're connected at. If I click on the port manager, it shows me more detail of what it's connected to. And of course, if I click on any of the ports, it allows me to customize the port including the name, VLAN profile, and a few other options. Most devices are detected correctly, so it will show in the switch what's actually attached to it, but you might find it useful to sometimes name your ports as well. For this switch, I'm using a standard profile on all the ports, which means it'll be connected to my main LAN. But some of the other configurations I'm going to share with you, I'm using some of the VLAN profiles, so you'll see how that works. A little bit more on that later in the video. So now that we have seen the configuration, let's go through how I'm using the ones that I have, starting with the one we just configured. As this was slated for my family room, my objective was to support all the devices in my entertainment rack, including a 10 gig NAS and a true NAS server running 10 gigabit, along with my Apple TV security camera and my Roku, which use a one gig connection. As buying a 10 gig switch to support all the devices and has enough ports can be really expensive, I opted to use two switches instead. So my first switch is actually a Flex XG from Unify, and it has four 10 gigabit ports and one one gigabit port. And I decided to pair this with the new mini to expand four more ports that can be used for one gigabit devices. So looking at the configuration, I have a 10 gigabit as my uplink one 10 gigabit port for my TrueNAS server, one 10 gigabit port for my NAS, and a spare 10 gigabit port for future expansion. The first port, or port one, which is actually a one gigabit port, is where I plugged in this mini switch, which allowed me to expand my ports to lower bandwidth devices, such as an Apple TV, camera, Roku. Though this is a bit untraditional, it actually works very well in this configuration, as it allows me the best of both worlds and allows me to have more ports for lower bandwidth devices without sacrificing the 10 gigabit speed or for, without having to pay for a real expensive 10 gigabit switch that has, you know, 10 plus ports. Next, let's look at one of the bedrooms where I have different requirements. With this switch, I wanted VLAN isolation. In this room, I wanted everything that would be plugged into the device to only use the family network VLAN. 
If we look at the configuration, we can see that every port has been set to the family profile, but port 5, which is the uplink. I'll leave a link of some videos I did on VLANs if you want more information about how to configure a VLAN and what they're used for. In the configuration for my office, I used a hybrid approach in which some of the ports are used for the default LAN and one port is used for a shared printer that's in the family network VLAN. I'm not going to go through every single example because I think you get the idea of the versatility and the power of this little switch. I'm currently using one in every room of the house and I find them to be extremely useful. Given their price, they're a great way to expand your system, especially if you're using Unify equipment because they mold right into your network with very little configuration. They can still be used with the Unify controller even if you don't use Unify equipment, so you can still benefit from looking at these switches. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, and please post any questions in the comments below. And if you find this video useful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.